Hello. This is going to be a very short video, just because I I, uh, I haven't made one for a little while, and I haven't been moved to make one yet for a while. I, I kind of wait until I something hits me um, that I need feel like I need to discuss. But um, this one, I, I want to put you onto a different playlist. Um, I, I received this book a while back, and I've been reading it. Um, it's called Traced. Uh, Human DNA's Big Surprise by Nathaniel T. Jensen, and um, very interesting, uh, you know, well-researched book. I highly recommend it. However, if you're not uh, looking at, if you're not into reading, I know a lot of people really aren't. You can kind of get a lot of the summary, and I'll put this in the uh, description of this video. Um, there's a playlist on YouTube called uh, The New History of the Human Race. It's put out by the group Answers in Genesis, and it's a fairly long. And this basically kind of goes through what the book is discussing. Um, I think there's, there's 26 videos in this one. And then there's another uh, playlist that's actually called Traced. Uh, DNA's Big Surprise with Dr. Nathaniel Jensen. Now, this Dr. Jensen is in both of them. And this one's got... Um, looks like 15 videos at this point. Um, so those two playlists, again, I'll link those playlists in this video. But one of the things I just want to mention is here's a, here's a human population graph from 1 AD up to speculating uh, to 2050. Okay. Now look at, this is an exponential graph. If you, if you, you know, took statistics or mathematics, you know how exponential graphs work. They, they make this hockey stick shape. I mean, it takes forever. You know, here we are back at year zero AD. And, and, and then it's just a gradual, look at, I mean, it's almost flatlined human population. Look at, for, you know, several centuries. And we start to see some growth here. And then grow, a little growth, and a little growth. And then all of a sudden, because of exponential math we see this absolute skyrocketing so look at when this look at when human population exploded you know we're talking about you know fairly recently here's 1750 here's 1900 so you know somewhere in the 1800s we see this massive upward hockey stick curve of the exponential graph and here we are up here in in billions so you know back back in the 1800s we, we're just now hitting the one billion mark on the whole planet now i'm not, i don't want to spoil if you watch that playlist i don't you know obviously i can't give you all of it but you know what they basically found is they can trace human dna back to one ancestor and biblically who would that be after a flood, uh, yeah, Noah. And then we see this offshoot of three. How many sons did Noah have? Three, you know. Um, so all of this stuff that we're dealing with here. And here's the important thing to take away. And if you watch that video series, you're going to see this. We are more connected than you could possibly imagine. And just in my own um my own family tree. I know this is going to sound weird for people, but it makes a lot more sense when you know and understand this. I found out that both of I've, I've been married twice. Uh, I'm related to both of my wives. They're both cousins of mine. Now, my current wife, uh, our ancestor, go, uh, our common ancestor that we, at least one that we know about, uh, is here, came to America in the early 1600s and was one of the people that founded the towns of Situate and Barnstable, Massachusetts. Um, now, when you look at his family, he had two wives, and with both wives, he had a ton of children, you know. So there's a lot of people related to this guy, right? So <clears throat> the, the point being is, we are, way, regardless of skin color, regardless of ethnic background, you know, God promised that, you know, that 
when we, we what we really want to do is we want to when we're looking at human history we want to look at it from a biblical perspective i say that israelites are everywhere because god said i'm going to scatter you and he scattered them everywhere and especially the divorced whore the northern kingdom of israel the 10 lost tribes so to speak uh, judah the southern kingdom was also scattered and we see that Solomon, like just for example, Solomon, Solomon married a lot of wives and he had a lot of children. And if you've done any research at all, then you know about the Solomonic dynasty in Ethiopia, you know, the last emperor of, of um, Ethiopia was uh, Selassie. Uh, I can't remember the, the full name. But then he was overthrown by the commies, you know, and had to flee, you know. But but that that uh, that fleeing of that Solomonic dynasty is where we get like the Rastafarian movement, you know. They they fleed, you know. Um, my personal opinion, now I I I can kind of sort of back this up, but I can't back it up completely. So this is speculation, okay? This is conjecture. This is my opinion. But I believe that the reason that the Western Hemisphere, what we call the Americas, North, Central, and South America, I believe that remained empty for a long time and became a migratory pattern. And when you, if you watch these playlists, I believe that most of those people that came here in waves, starting from the East, they, they, they went East from Central Asia, uh, you know, and then we centuries later we see coming west from from uh, Europe and and uh, different places from the west across the Atlantic. I believe those were all uh, Israelites. Now people are going, oh, are you nuts? And and what I mean by that is they're carrying Israelite DNA. They're of the different tribes. And remember, if you look at this, we're doing a lot of blending with all kinds of other people. But regardless of skin's color, just like Solomon's sons and daughters that were from different princesses and women of different races, or, you know, ethnic groups, not really not right, well, there's just one race, it's just humans, man. So we, <clears throat> you know, we are uh, blending together. So the... When you, if you watch this playlist, start looking at it from a biblical perspective, because everything got the way God's looking at it is we have these, we have these sons from these different lines, you know, the children of, of Ishmael. We have the Esau and Isaac, uh, or Esau and Jacob. We've got, you know, Isaac and Ishmael. We've got the sons of Lot, we have, and then we have all these other sons, you know, uh, descendants from uh, not just Shem, but Ham and Japheth all around the world. And remember, they very small. Look at this, this is one, this is zero AD. This is at the time of, of m the Messiah and his first advent. Look at how small the population is. You know, way below one billion. You're just talking a couple of hundred million all over the planet. So now think back at the time of Moses. How many people are there? You know, that flood wiped out a lot of people. You know, it doesn't take long to start getting a lot of people because when we get busy, we get busy pretty quick. But my point being is you're going to have to intermix with people from all over. Why do you think it was God was sending uh, Isaac and Jacob uh, over here to get cousins? Because there weren't that many people. And we're all connected. So I would encourage you to either read the book or do both. Get the book and then watch those playlists, which I'll link in this video. And uh, that's going to do it for me. You guys have a good one. Talk to you later.